Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Top Flight Pod. You know what it is. You know what we're here to do. Back in the studio today, beautiful Austin, Texas. I'm with the boys. We got Ozzy on the ones and twos. We got my JB here to my left. And ladies and gentlemen, please, guys, join me in welcoming the great Eli Lesser here in studio. Welcome, Eli. Dude, thank you guys for having me. When I found out I was coming to Austin, like the first thing I wanted to do was to reach out to you guys to hop on here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, the first thing I wanted to do was to, to pull up and, you know, record with you guys. So, I'm excited. That sounded really sus. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but, no to, to hop on the Top Flight pod. And, dude, Austin's awesome. I, I like oh, it yeah. a lot. Look, mate, the boys know I don't really sip. I don't really drink much. I know. But today's a special occasion. Cheers. Right? Hey, cheers. Hey, cheers. Listen, 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 guys. You can't fake that sound. You can't fake that. Cheers, Cheers mate. Cheers, brothers. Shout out to you, Ozzy for getting this, these. They got the lights. They got the lights from <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right. We're in true top flight. Bro, this is like, crazy, bro. What are you I'm What's sipping. I'm, si- I'm bro, sipping. I'm sipping. I'm sipping. Hey, yeah. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, uh, it's been a good weekend. I mean, well, it's, it's Friday, but, um, you know, excited for the weekend. Excited for our guests, man. I appreciate you coming through. And, uh, yeah. We've had Fabian Renko, we've had yeah. Eric Goodman, but honestly, no disrespect to those names, but to me, this is the this biggest is guest we've had. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, bro. This is a guy that I've looked at his, looked at his content, and it's it's pushed me, it's it's motivated me, and I look, looked up to this guy's work, bro. So for me, this is a bit of a personal milestone, to have Eli Lesser in the top flight yeah. box do it. And also, when we first started making content, like when we first like started to try to, uh, you know, this journey... We when we were like, oh, let's look at examples. Let's look see what what else is out there. Eli Lesser was out there this is, cooking. This, this is you the know, guy. we're like, whoa, look at look look at this guy, this man. He's killing guy, it. Bro. Yeah. So I'm I'm happy you're here, brother, for and sure. Just a bit of a heads up to the listeners. This is not going to be your usual top flight Austin FC centered podcast. We're going to be talking about multiple things. We're going to be talking about MLS, Austin FC, uh, body armor, life. So just. I'm very excited for this conversation. I'm excited for you to hear it. But before we get into it, Ozzy, how are you doing, mate? Come on, let's wait. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. you. Got me here today. And for a special guest, thank you to come to Austin. El compa Eli. El compa Eli. El compa Eli. El compa Eli. I like that. I like that. (laughs) All right, gentlemen. Well, in today's conversation, one of the first things that I want to get into, one of the first topics that I want to touch up on, is really just the state of Austin FC. Now, I said that it wasn't going to be your typical Austin FC pod. I know, right, guys? But that's how we're going to start off tonight. Now, Eli, you're somebody that has been following this, this league for a very long time, bro, since you were, what, 14 years old when you started making content? What can you tell us about Austin FC, how you saw them when they came into the league, and how you see them where they're at today? Yeah, Austin's an interesting one for me because at first, you know, there was a controversy about the crew, you know, almost getting moved to Austin and all that stuff. So heading into it, you guys had, you know, a steep hill to climb in terms of, you know, gaining respect from the league and everything. For sure. And I think you guys did that very quickly. We had haters from the jump. Yeah, haters from the jump. Um, it was cool to see like Matthew McConaughey get involved early yeah. on that famous clip of him doing the drums and everything. Um, but you know, the thing I've been most blown away wasn't like, you know, you guys going very far in your second season. It was, you know, just the fandom from the jump, I think has been the most impressive thing. And that's why, you know, Austin has been like top of my list of places to visit also just the city, but Austin FC, you know, I've wanted to see what the crowd is really like in person. Speaking of the crowd, mate, we're not going to put a timestamp on this episode, right? Because it's, a mul- it's like a multiple conversation podcast but what have you heard from the atmosphere at q2 you know we're, we're going to be there saturday tomorrow what are you like what are you waiting to see if it was true or not from what you've been told uh for me first of all the loudness um it's interesting because a lot of people come to visit austin fc and you know they've been like oh this is the best atmosphere i've seen in north america and i've been to over half of the mls stadiums at this point and i, I want to see how it compares one thing i'm very excited for though is the fact that, and I have a problem with this with a lot of MLS clubs, even if they have a great atmosphere, a lot of the chants are the same thing. And when I hear Austin matches on TV, they do sound more different. Um, That's something I like about, you know, even I'll I'll say both LA clubs, is the fact that, you know, a lot of the chants are different than just your we love yous. And, oh. you know, uh, come on, score a goal, whatever. Or the olays, olays, olays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're, they're more diverse. You know, I think it helps um, that a lot of them are in Spanish, even if I don't know what the words are. Like, they just sound better on TV and they just sound better in general. So 
Okay. Uh, I'm excited to see what that's about. Okay, now, B, I want to get you in on this topic, bro, because I want you to kind of, like, give Eli a bit of a rundown or a yeah. bit of a, hey, hey get, get ready for this. Because so, the, the way that we live games, yeah. you're on the pitch. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you're you're almost like a player without playing. You know what I'm saying? So I want, <laughs> you, to, I want you to kind of walk him through what he should expect at Q2 Stadium. Look, so discovering this team, there's – as far as atmosphere, as far as the loudness, as far as, like, the vibe around Q2 Stadium, it's typical with any team. It comes in kind of waves where it peaks certain times where it's like, oh, my God, we're, like, hitting a frequency. Whereas this is, like, one of the best atmospheres in the league, probably in, you know, in all of North America. And then there's times where it kind of dips a little bit. You know, it, 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 a lot depends on the, on the team's form and everything. I tell you what, man, our second season. Our second season, the the frequency that we were at was uh, like it was it was crazy, and you know, right now Austin FC is in a tough 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 spot right now. Um, there's a lot of um, man, I would say a little bit of division in the fan base. There's there's uh, uh, different opinions that nobody kind of agrees on. But at the end of the day, I think we do a great job supporting this team and being loud and showing out for our, our team. But uh, there's definitely waves in, in in our support, and I think uh, I think we're gonna be loud Saturday. I think we're gonna have we're gonna go, a good showing. May, go ahead, Elon. Sorry. Oh no, something I want to capture from you guys are the natural reactions. I know your season's on the line this Saturday, so you know uh, if, it, yeah. if it goes well, you know that'll be awesome. If it goes poorly, you know selfishly for me, like I'll get great content out of that, but I don't want that on you for yeah. you guys. Um, but you know I want to get you know the the vibe of how the fans are truly thinking yeah and understand that a bit more because i'll be honest austin fc hasn't been on my radar this year just because you guys haven't been as great as you have been in the yeah. past so i haven't been watching as much i mean i saw you guys destroy my galaxy um but you know in turn that, that's really the only austin match i've watched from start to finish this year um yeah, okay. so I'm, i mean i'm excited to to see that i'm also you know my childhood favorite player, one of them is on your team, Jossie Zardes. So Man. I'm excited to see him at this stage of his career. But, um, yeah, and, you know, when I picked this matchup to, to go to, I was hoping, you know, Austin would have more of a chance to make the playoffs. You yeah. Know? Um, and I know RSL, this is a big match for them for seeding and that, that stuff. So and I they're thought, flying high. Yeah, I was hoping this matchup would kind of work out a bit better than it, it is just heading into it. But, you know, I, I'm expecting a, a great match tomorrow. And we even have a chant that is, like, even louder when we're down. So, like, whenever the, t the team isn't really doing well in the field, I think our fans do a great job in supporting regardless. There's been multiple games where we've been down two goals, three goals, and it's, like, 80 minutes in, and we're still chanting going strong. We made comebacks to win the games. It's just so – out. I hope the league sees that, that we're a team that supports no matter what, the stuff going on in the field. But there's a lot of stuff going on, bro, with, especially with the coach. Now, with that perfect, perfect <laughs> beat, it's, it's almost like you and I have been doing pods for a very long time. <laughs> I want to, you know, transition into a bit of Austin and MLS and in the sense of the pressure that is lived here and whatnot. Now, midweek, Coach Josh Wolf came out to the media and he said, you know, there's there's not really much pressure in MLS. In other leagues, they burn cars, they kidnap family members, and they do this and that. Pretty much crimes against players or whatnot. And when you when that was uploaded to social media, that quote, and it was Josh Wolf that was saying it. We have the video here. Fans went to social media and they were saying there is no pressure in MLS. Worst that will happen to him is that he'll 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 get fired and go to another MLS team. We get and we get another recently fired MLS manager to replace him. And I mean, just paragraphs from folks, Rigo Pinguino saying they've struggled to score three out of four years under Josh Wolf, and then folks saying, you know, that he's a bit of a clown and this and that. The comments here are very uh intense against Josh Wolf, but it's because he's talking about the pressure in this league. So you being somebody that has followed this league for so long, mate, you've seen coaches get hired, get fired, guys, players come and go. And when you hear these statements from Coach Josh Wolf saying that, oh, you know, there's not much pressure in here. I'm not worried about it. It's harder in other leagues, whatever. I mean, do you think that's that's going to be looked on bad when people talk about the league? Because you want there to be a bit more push to win here, no? Yeah, the statement's a little confusing for me. He must really feel secure with his job um, because, yeah. you know, if anything, there should be the most pressure – he's ever had right now because his team's on the verge of missing the playoffs three out of four years. Yes. So, you know, that that should be enough pressure on you already. Uh, I, I'm glad that no one's, you know, destroying his cars and whatever and his family <laughs> and whatnot. Um, 
But, you know, a lot of people do look at MLS sometimes in general and feel there's a complacency issue where mm. teams are just, you know, happy to be here. And some MLS clubs are, you know, and that's part of the issue where it's a single entity where all owners benefit at the same time um, because there's less pressure on them to, to have, you know, that type of um, – there's no pressure on them to, to really succeed because they're all going to win at the end of the day it's True, in a way. Um, it's unfortunate because, you know, I do feel like Austin FC is a very ambitious club. And I wish I wish that maybe, you know, he would have phrased that better. Uh, maybe this is him coping or something. <laughs> just, uh, you know, trying not to think about the pressure right now. And mm -hmm. maybe that was just his way of saying, oh, I don't have to – or I don't, I don't have to worry about it. But deep down he's like, oh, my God, like what the hell is going to go on? How would you take it, B? <laughs> I think he's speaking facts, bro. I think oh! I think he's speaking facts, no, bro. bro. You no, know what it is? No. You know what it is, H. Eli? The, the reason why there's these uh, comparisons to South America, to Mexico, uh, about when pressure kicks up for teams and, and these certain things happen, because it's engraved in culture from, like, generations where, like, your grandfather's father was supporting this club and, and certain things happen. And it, let's be real, the, the sport here in the United States, it's it's brand new. It's not really, like, within our culture to 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 do certain things. You know, it's the United States. We, uh, you know, not to get all, like, you know, put it in a big picture, but United States is like, you know, the, the police force here, the, the laws, it's more, like, Face serious. ID in every corner Face ID, you, you know, go to South America, the police force is, like sketchy in some place in mexico where like you know you could you could have an altercation with an officer and, and, and you and could be all right up. it'd be you, all right you you could beat him up you could beat him up and it'd be all right here you put your hands on officer dude you're it's you're it's you're done you're done, you're done. You're so done it's just a culture in the in the in the country and culture in other places we can't compare ourselves to that and and i don't think that we should try to push that sort of culture i don't think it'll happen let me ask a question are here on the top five pod. What do we think about pro versus? Sorry, what do we think about the pro rail argument? Do you want relegation in MLS, or you think that it's good the way it is right now? Because Ozzy has pointed it out. Also, there's leagues around the world that are wanting to adopt the MLS style, yeah. the MLS structure. Yeah. So why is it that those leagues want to adopt something that we want to get rid of? Because it benefits the owners. I mean, yeah. if you're if you're already in the top flight, of course you don't want relegation. You know, in other countries, you know, if you get relegated, that affects your entire city's economy. Mm. You know, it, it could totally yeah. damage just your whole city where that's never going to be an issue in America. Um, so, of course, if you're, you know, maybe a team in the top flight of a small but you're a smaller city in that country, you don't want to lose that spot ever. Um, so I see why other people, other countries want to do that. Would I like pro rail? Yes. It's not something I like to talk about a lot anymore because I just, I'm such a negative Nancy about it where okay. there's, I just, what do you it's mean? never, to me, it's just never going to happen. Yeah, of course. So why, yeah. why keep talking about it? I, Ooh, I okay. agree. I agree hundred percent with that. It's never going to happen. Plus this system, it's the most American thing. It's American sports in general, the way that it is. It's closed circuit. It's it's America. There is no way that that will ever, ever even be considered. So I'll say this. Yeah. You want to know what the best thing about the MLS is? That the checks ain't never late. Checks ain't never late. Checks ain't never checks late. Checks ain't never late. Ain't never and if late. you're the shittiest team in the league, guess what? You get to pick first in the draft, brother. <laughs> I wish I wish the draft had more importance because that is you know, also yeah. I love that like in the NBA and yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. But yeah, I mean, we talk about you. You mentioned how American sports work in MLS is more focused on making it an American sports league and competing with other American sports than with other league soccer leagues yeah. around the world. And True. to me, it seems like the MLS wants to. Um, I wouldn't say more importance to get eyes around the globe to watch the league more than they care about maybe cultivating the fans here in the States. Is that weird to say? Is that my out of pocket? Because it just – with rebrandings, with changes to the roster, with bringing in huge names like Messi, it's almost like the MLS with cutting down on, on the competition, which is the one that LAFC just won the, the U.S. Open Cup. It, to me, the MLS gives me the vibes like, man, we want to be a league that we want to be watched globally. And I think they care a little bit more about that than trying to cultivate the fans that are here in the United States. I because they have saying. competition. I mean, the, the NFL, during college football, NFL, all these things going on in the city, you go to any, I mean, this is new. I mean, it's getting better, but you go to a bar, you go to a, a restaurant. 
Good luck trying to watch an MLS game on TV. I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask you that real quick. Like we were, we've been driving around Austin, yeah. right? We've been seeing some bars. I've been telling you, hey, that's that bar, that's that bar, that's that bar. How many Austin MC flags did you see compared to NFL teams? We didn't see any, did we? None, bro. None. None. And but we saw Arsenal flags. We yeah. saw United flags. Yeah. We we we've seen clubs. And one thing that I wanted to mention that we talked about a lot in the car is, you know, I think in America we have more soccer fans than any other sport. Mm. Yeah, And it's all about, you know, how can we get them to be fans of MLS? Because, you know, for me in L.A., as big as El Trafico is, the biggest rivalry in L.A. is Chivas versus Club America. Like, it's, you know, how do we True. get those soccer fans to buy into MLS? And I, I just hate how it has to be, oh, once you guys add Pro-Rel, which I think is just a nah. it's a, a loud minority of people saying that. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a frustrating thing where it's, you know, we have the soccer fans in America to make – MLS or just soccer, the most popular sport. Yeah. And I think it is, in a way. Let me ask you this, bro. Do you think the League's Cup is a push to do that? Maybe do you have faith in the League's Cup to be able to bring soccer fans that are the America Chivas Classicals? That's what Classicals. I to talk about next. The, um, the, <laughs> should, should, I, I can see your mind, brother. You but do, my, do you yeah. see these rivalries like... I know it comes with a caveat of maybe the U.S. Open Cup getting pushed to the side, but what are your thoughts on that? Maybe it does it help? Do you think it would help bring those America and Chivas fans and, and, and everything to watch the MLS? That's the goal, and I, you know, I'll get canceled for saying this, but I actually, oh. I actually love the League's Cup in theory. It, I like the idea of yeah. the League's Cup, and a lot of people just hate that. Um, you know, they hate that it's it, it's a thing because of the Open Cup and stuff. But I love the, the, the idea of the League's Cup, the execution. I mean, for me, the first League's Cup was amazing. Oh, it was. Uh, it I was, loved dude, it. Dude, I loved the Everyone first League's Cup. Everyone bought in. It was, it, I loved it so much that, like, I don't know what it was. It was just because, well, I mean, we spoke about this in yeah. length on the Top Flight Pod, bro. It's just like we have family members who support certain clubs in Liga MX who would never have a conversation about Austin versus yep. Colorado. Never even if I tell them, hey, man, Austin played today. Oh, yeah, who? Colorado. Oh, Colorado has a team? That's their reaction. Well, my, but, my, with my family that I know of that I talk about Austin, they yeah. say, oh, Austin plays today? They're getting ready to lose, right? They're getting ready I'm to lose. Like, Come on, but bro. but when the League's Cup was here, yeah, when the League's, League's Cup, Cup was here, this League's Cup. America versus when St. Louis played America, when when Pumas, I mean, this year when we played Monterrey, when we played Pumas, it like it like solidified the the at least from my personal view because of my family, it solidified the family a little bit. All the the uncles and the cousins kind of like uh, we had a conversation about Austin and about Monterrey and Pumas, and it was united a little bit. Something that never happened. Something before. that would never happen before, and I think that is the positive of the League's it was, Cups. It was, it was a breakthrough. But I do say that this year's League's Cup didn't really it didn't really hit like the first one. I mean, as I mentioned with Austin FC, it had an uphill battle from the jump because of all the controversies with the yeah. Open yeah. Cup and yep. everything. I mean, I there was a point where I just wanted to not cover it because it felt like every video I had to make had to be negative and every comment was super negative just about the League's Cup in general. And one thing I'd like to point out is, you know, the biggest complaint is the fact that all the matches are in the U.S. But, yeah. you know, I think it does benefit the game in the U.S. to have the matches there. And as we talked about yesterday, I, I'm sure you're about to mention it, but you mentioned how, you know, the, the largest fan base for League MX is in America. Yeah. And yeah. um and I saw that I went to Colorado versus Club America at the Galaxy Stadium. So it was a Club America home match. There was there were no Colorado fans. There was just Dude, all it was ninety eight percent. It was America. amazing. Yeah, uh, it was cool to see that. And yeah. I think a big reason why all the matches are in the U.S. is first to make money off the yeah. you know the Liga MX fans already mm -hmm. in existence. But also in theory, what could work is you know if you're bringing out the Liga MX fans to the MLS stadiums. They might see the stadium. They may. They might be like, "Oh wow, this is a really nice stadium. I would love to like take my family here again." Exactly. And then they'll start going to yeah. Austin FC matches. Yep. And, and it's only been two iterations. Like it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take like a, a people. People. Uh, there's some fans that watched League's Cup this year that are Liga MX fans, that are Monterrey fans, Pumas, Cruz Azul fans. That they they're like. They didn't even like realize that this is a yearly thing. Like this is gonna happen next year. Like what? Like oh, like what? So if once it engraves in there, like this is every year, maybe. It, I think it's going to take time, but I think it, it, does, it is going to help the cause. I want to say this, man. I want to bring Ozzy in on this because he, ha he has something to say on this. Without mentioning the, the player's name, right? We're not going to say who it was. But somebody told you that they love the League's Cup, an Austin FC player. You kind of want to share that story with us super quick? Yeah, so the other day I was talking to one of the Austin FC players with two of them. And we was talking about the, what happened with the MLS. And I was sharing with them, like, 
the MLS, we have a lot of things to do as a soccer fans in America. So we have a lot of work to do because we have a lot of competition with the NFL, NBA, hockey, UFC, everything. And I was telling, like, if we compare with another towns and other cities, they have a lot of franchise with all the sports. We're so lucky in Austin. And I was explaining him, like, hey, I had a lot of family in Mexico. And they are, like, even the social media for Mexico was all of them with, oh, the League's Cup, the League's Cup. And the player was telling me, I'm not going to lie to you. But for me, the competition and everything, I love the League's Cup more than the U.S. Cup. I love it. He just telling me the two players from Austin FC, they told me, like, Aussie, we love the League's Cup. I hope they keep doing because the energy, the competition, it's the best for us. As yeah. a, as a, you as a soccer player, you're going to compete in those kind of tournaments. He was telling me, it's a little bit bored. Would you always compete with the same teams? The MLS team. The MLS, MLS teams. teams. Yeah. So you as a player yeah. that we are not available to play with yep. another international team yeah. or something like that, it's so good to you as a professional at athlete or, or player, yeah. you want to compete with another ones. I want to add to that. I want to add to that. Stephen Cleveland on the recent Austin FC live that. that he did, yeah. he said that his greatest save of all time in his career was the penalty save against Bonneray in the League's Cup because he had the he had he had the chance to block the penalty that kept Austin FC in the lead three to two, and he did it. And and against a a powerful forward, uh, Memote, one of the biggest nines yeah. in L yeah. three right now, and he saved his PK. And Stephen Cleveland comes out and he says, "Yeah, that's been the greatest save in my career." You know what I'm saying? And that was in Leagues Cup. And you know what I'm saying? The energy was insane that day, dude. N not only was the energy insane, let me I'll, I'll say this straight up because there's been a lot of people who've been kind of pushing back on not saying this. The the game against Pumas was probably one of the best performances in our history. The game against Monterrey and Pumas yeah. have been one of the greatest showing in our short history. Performances, atmosphere, just every aspect of this team, those two games has been our peak. And and, and, and to be honest with you, I don't know where we could re reach those levels again. I mean, you got to get it out of the guys. You got to get it out of them. That's kind of maybe why these players are telling Ozzy, like, we love it because yeah. it brings something out of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It, brings that, it brings out that dog. Yeah, but, know? But, <laughs> you know? but then there's a caveat to it is the U.S. Open Cup. Yes. So for us, let's talk Open Cup. Yeah. Let's because open because cup. if you openly support, like we we did, I mean, I came out on top flight and we, I opened, we, I think we all of us, we openly support, we love it. And there's fans that are going to come out and be like, oh, how dare you? The U.S. Open Cup is this and that. Just because we came out and supported the Leeds Cup, we're not we're not agreeing with what's happening with the U.S. Open Cup. We're just showing our our appreciation for the Leeds Cup. I want to ask you like this real quick, mate. We were talking about this quote this week. Uh, what Kai Kamara uh, told the the media when he was kind of talking about the Open Cup or whatnot, and he was saying, "Hey, you know what? You can rename it if you want. Just don't get rid of it because it's 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 U.S. soccer. You know what I'm saying? It's so engraved into into this culture. That's one thing that we've been having for a long time." So what's your take on, like, what Kai Kamara said, the Open Cup in general? Yeah, I, I did find it – I don't know. I, I don't like publicly just being so negative on certain people. Um, but, you know, it, it felt kind of weird to me, you know, that Don was there. Like, he had to be there. But just the fact that, you know, he was so open about, like, trying to get rid of it and everything and then him to be there, it's kind of like a slap in the face to the tournament in a way. Um, but, you know, for me, the Open Cup is a big deal. And in general, like, you don't tell – or, you know, you wouldn't tell – you know, a United fan, hey, we're at, we are we would love for you guys to get rid of the FA Cup in England, you know? Every country has their version of the Open Cup, and it's a tournament that must exist, and it is, you know, it does have history in U.S. soccer, yep. you know? In a, in a country where the game is so, feels so young, it's the proof that it has been there, at least in some fashion, and that's history that we, we can't afford to lose and get rid of. You think they could coexist? They should. Um, I think the only way it could properly work is if MLS finds a way to open up to where teams are allowed more depth yep. because that's the big complaint. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That is a really good point, man. And talking about Open Cup, talking about teams and whatnot, I really want to ask you about your journey with Orange County SC, yeah. man. You know, that's some news that, you know, hit the world. Eli Lesser, part of the ownership, mate. I mean, you're like LeBron with Liverpool, low-key, with, with Orange <laughs> County SC, mate. Right? So, just talk to us about that, man. How has that journey been? What does it feel like to to, ha to just own a small piece of where you're from? Yeah. So, uh, Orange County caught my eye a few years ago. 
Uh, they did a collab with the uh, an, an Orange County punk legendary, a uh, legendary punk band called Social Distortion, and I was a punk kid in high school, so I was like, "Whoa, this is amazing! I need this collab." <laughs> That's how it started. Anyways, in in the fall, I already knew I was going to be rebranding. I was this week in MLS, and then I became Eli Lesser TV to Good just times. you know anything. And they announced that they were doing fan ownership, kind of like how they do in Germany. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what happened is they reached out to a bunch of orange County celebrities and then just like Southern California soccer people, um, to, to become owners of the club. And they asked me if I wanted to be a part of it and I've never jumped on anything quicker. And it just been such an amazing opportunity. It's awesome to see a real grassroots club and be a part of that situation. It's Mm -hmm. awesome to talk to the fans who have been there. Uh, since the start, you know, this is their 11th season. Um, but being, being an owner, having, you know, I don't have like a major say in anything, uh, but having any sort of influence on a club yeah. is so amazing to me. Um, and they're an amazing club. Some of the best fans, we've flown out some influencers from England to come promote the club. Some okay. big ones, uh, you know, Ellis Platten, who does away days. Mm-hmm. We had stunt peg. Um, and it's it just great to, to bring people out there and to show them the alternatives to MLS in a way. And just because I'm with Orange County doesn't mean I'm anti-MLS now or anything. It's it's the opposite. I'm trying to help bridge the gap as well between MLS and USL. Very, yeah. a very, uh, it's very you know, broken. It's yeah. a very broken bridge right now. Yeah. And especially, you know, being a Galaxy fan, uh, there was a situation with the Galaxy in Orange County that almost made Orange County fold. Um, so, you know, they have a lot of resentment towards the galaxy and I'm trying to rebuild that gap, uh, re, yeah. uh, you know, rebuild that bridge as well, because, um, you know, it's, it's a frustrating thing, but you know, Orange County, I see I'm repping them right now. I, I tend to, I try to as much as I can. Um, we have a lot of great merch, so go cop. Um, but you know, it, it's been a, a magical experience and it's awesome to finally see a little inside to the USL. You know, I've always known about the USL, but mm-hmm. I've never fully known truly like how it works and how it operates and some of the roster rules are crazy because we're able to just sign like random players out of nowhere because we've had a lot of injuries injury issues Mm. um things that i wish mls was we were able to do in mls but um it's been an amazing thing and you know i i'm not from orange county i'm from la la but you know it's awesome to be a part of you know the the at least the the second division club in my region there you go region there we go that's perfect way to put it but b if Austin FC pulled up and you're like, hey, we're opening up fan ownership, what would you do? What, oh, I, mean, I would do everything I can to, 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 to <laughs> be it, that. Actually, it would be more like the Austin Bold. That's what Austin I was Bold's thinking. The but the Austin Bold moved. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. That must feel amazing, man. So, you know, shout out to, to, to you and, and doing that. It's to be, it's, uh, just to be a part of it. I could just only imagine. I mean. Did you ever go to a Bold game? Uh no, I went I did to not. I went to two two both yeah. games. Yeah, it was so far, man. And also, the I heard the heat wasn't crazy. Well, no. it was like an open stadium. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, there was a, some beef between the bold ownership the and Austin beef. FC. It, it, they actually tried to stop Austin FC from coming to to to, mm. to the city. So mm-hmm. it was it, from the jump again another bridge that's like was yeah, messed yeah, up yeah. like you said man we need to work on on repairing these these broken bridges between the the usl and mls shout out to the give and go boys uh but the other day i saw them at oh, Kisu I, stadium I, I, they had a bold shirt. and <laughs> sotero so it's he had an austin bold jersey and i told him i was like bro you can't be wearing that here you can't be pulling up to Q2 I, with that. I don't. Th- I don't know if he wants to wear it. Or not. I don't know what it is, man. He we got We got some kits, man. We gotta get you some Austin awesome FC. He told gear, me he was like. He told me he was like, oh, it's because I. I don't care. And I was like, I know, bro, but some of these fans do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like there was beef between the ownerships. You know, some people might remember that. You know, <laughs> I, I I don't get you know Austin FC fans hating Austin Bold. Okay. I you know I I I don't think you should have the mentality of lo- like looking down on the smaller guy in a way. Yeah. I get it more from the opposite side of Austin being or Bold being frustrated with Austin FC. Uh, but that's just the unfortunate reality about MLS expansion. It's happened in mm-hmm. St. Louis. It's happened with in San Diego most recently. Yeah. Uh, you know where an MLS club comes into a city, a, a USL market, and the USL club unfortunately can't hang anymore. Um, and that's a big thing. You know, with Orange County SC, we're making sure. Well, there won't be an MLS club in Orange County, but you know, we're making sure that, you know, they you, you can't get rid of us. We're too strong. Mm. 
Okay, I see, I see, mate. Well, I want to ask you, brother, tell me about the relationship that, that you got with Body Armor, bro, because, you know, you're here in Austin, uh, you know, you, you're you you're doing work with them and whatnot, and you've also been to other places, you know, uh, working with Body Armor, I always see you with the with, with the drink, giving them, giving them love, giving them praise. How, how has that been? It's been magical because the, it's the only reason why I'm able to, you know, be here today. Yeah. You know, it's the only reason why I'm a, I've been able to see all the stadiums I've been to. Um, you know, I don't have the means myself to to go out on the on these trips. And wait, you're not a multimillionaire? <laughs> I am not, unfortunately, <laughs> until I sell my stake in Orange County, which hey! I don't want to do. No. <laughs> no, it's not that much. After, um, after, after they three peat or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, uh, but you know, so the the partnership started actually. You know, it's nice that you guys you know found me when you guys were coming up and stuff, um, because uh, Body Armor found me. And they, they wanted to bring me because they viewed me as the voice of MLS fans. To be um, honest that, with you, to, to be honest with you, when we first started, we looked up like other con. You honestly, bro, like straight up, give you your props. You're like the main, like at at least at the time, you know, you've been growing and everything. You've been like the 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 uh, pioneer, maybe, of like just growing, trying to grow the 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 content, the MLS content in, the, in this in this country. So yeah, I mean, mad props. I mean, I can see why Body Armor was yeah. like, "Yo, we got to yeah. get that guy." Of course, hundred yeah. percent. The moment that we're currently experiencing right it's now, the bad, moment that we're living bro. right now, it's, it's, it's bad. It's tough because of the playoffs, this, the situation, what Joshua ha has been saying, and like Eli said earlier, Just, you know, we could be eliminated Saturday. You we know, could versus, be versus artists. We could be eliminate Saturday. There's been there's been some problems with our talisman Drusy, just him coming out and then the retweets. The retweets. Uh, you know then, about that? I, yeah. I've seen the retweets. And then and then the uh the, the problem with the fans that are that they just they're just had enough of Wolf, me included. It's just there's so much stuff, so much stuff that is distracting away from the support to support this team. It's just there's been times where we've had games where we got like one shot on target, you know. It's just, it's just, it's just been really a, a really tough season for us, and it's, you know, their expectations are high, which they should be because of what you've seen and heard around the league, which they should be. And I'm not dodging the fans. I I love the fans, and they're gonna show out. I know they are, but there's been times where it's just the frequency. It's like crazy, and I, you know, mate, I wish we were in a better place. I guess I'm trying to say. Mate, tell me about the retweets. <laughs> the retweet. It's just interesting to see, you know, your star player. You're basically the he is the face of the franchise. You know, see, Facts. you know, reacting that way. Um, it's frustrating, you know, maybe from the club to see that f for the club to see that. But also, you know, um, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with me and the, the Josh Wolf comment as well. Um, you know, the Josh Wolf comments and then you see the retweets and stuff. It's, yeah. you know, the players have to buy into the coach. And if the coach isn't bought in, then, you know, what's going to happen with the rest of the team? Like. You know, maybe I should expect Austin to lose tomorrow, which I, you know, for your guys' sake, I hope not. But hope it, not. it seemed like everyone's disconnected and they're they've kind of unplugged um, from that energy for for the season. I tell you what, dude, coming from me as a fan, and I can speak from a lot of fans, the hope, the the hope is it's just not there, brother. It's just not there. Look, look, look. And it's just, I mean, I'm talking about on the field, right? I'm talking about our hope to even maintain. There's some fans that came out and said that they wish, they hope that we don't make playoffs. They hope that we get you eliminated. Them, and and you can't blame them. I year with the Galaxy. Yeah, and, and it's just, it just sucks that we're in this time because we've gotten recognition around the league, around you know content creators like yourself. The first thing you think of Austin, and I've seen this from a lot, is like, oh, the fan base is, is insane, and, and, and it's, a, it's a great, and it's all this, but... We deserve better on the pitch, man. Before that, I ask you some stuff about the Galaxy, bro, because I want to ask you a lot about the Galaxy. Not only do I want to talk about Diego, Ricky Puch, and guys like that, but I want to say this. Um, you know, we've been hanging out the past couple of days, Eli, and I don't know if the boys have, like, noticed this in me, but I cannot wait until we go on break this season. Um, this season has exhausted me, brother. Uh, you know, we've been pumping out a bunch of content, but other than that, when you pump out a bunch of content, if 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 you're not in the right headspace, like, you know, if you're not happy with what you're pumping out, you know what I'm saying? It 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 has a drag on you. And I'm in a different headspace when Austin FC is doing good and we're pumping out the contact. Ha, ah, you know, it's it's awesome. But when the team is dragging their feet, when the coach is dragging its fans through the media, you know, it's 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 a bit of a it's a bit of a frustrating moment having to log in to do your work and then you know you you clock out, you know, and you're like, man, I wish I wish the boys had had you know picked it up. So. As soon as the season goes into break, bro, I'm 
getting my family, bro. We're going to Fredericksburg. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting an Airbnb, like the little Hell pyramid yeah. Airbnbs, okay, the, okay. the triangle little, ones. Yeah. I'm disappearing for a week, dog. Reek, Nobody's going to hear from me. I'm taking four or five books with me. I'm Hell just yeah. reading, reading, reading. And also, Eli, bro, you, you told me you were like, hey, kudos to you for reading a book this year or, or now – Nowadays, but that's I, I, I'm picturing that as soon as the season's over, bro, I'm disappearing for a couple amount of days. And I just want to read and I want to just hang out with my family and I just want to reconnect with with myself because this season it really did something to me, bro. Not it's just the fact that it's back to back seasons too. It's not like we had a great season last season and this year we took off. We had a horrible season last season, and this one is even worse. So and then like the the way I like to compare is you've seen the meme of SpongeBob <laughs> where he's all like, "Oh look, this is a picture when you first started working here, and it's a picture of us. We're happy to we're recording, making content, <sighs> and look at you now, and we're." All like uh, drains, bro. There's, there's a picture going viral of me. <laughs> oh, yeah, the freaking Popeyes lady meme, dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but man, dude, hopefully next year, you know, we Austin comes back and it's a whole nother story because we're not Uh-oh, going anywhere. selling hope already, brother. Hey, true. <laughs> next season, we're not going anywhere. We got Spanish podcasts that are coming out next season. We're already working on it. Tune in already. Spanish podcast is already coming out from Top Flight. But next season, by the time next season starts, we're gonna have something insane, you know, something similar to what you're seeing here, but for the Spanish, um. Listeners, because like we said, Liga Mekis, Spanish speaker fans, they're king right now in like the south of, of at least of this country and also north places as well. But they consume soccer maybe more than the English speaker. And I feel like we've catered a lot to the English speaking folks and, and we could do more in, in trying to reach those fans that have a Necaxa jersey, that have a Chivas jersey, that have a Pumas jersey. And we could turn it into an Austin jersey. The thing, That's my goal. Yeah. That's my goal. The, uh, same for me. Same for us. It's just... The thing is, like, like we spoke about the the fan base here and like the league's cup and everything. It's like we could, there's fans out there that just maybe we could just kind of help. Like, hey man, just support Austin. You're from Austin. There's so many fans that are from Austin that love the sport that couldn't be bothered with Austin FC. They hate them. They, they it pisses me off. It, they they low key hate the team. It is no reason other than just other just so. If we can give them a a a, a content in their language in Spanish and 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 also connect with them culturally to bring more people in to support the team that would be great let's also be real let's also be real we've austin has never brought in hh chicharito carlos vela chucky lozano they've never brought in that big player the biggest player we've ever seen and folks defend him with his, their life sebastian drusi yeah. where folks in argentina that we've seen videos they don't know who he is they had to google him he recently went toe-to-toe versus arturo vidal and fans from Chile were like, "Yo, who is who is this guy, Drusi? Why is he bantering, uh, you know this this this, this guy? You know, Drusi was saying, Drusi yeah. was saying that Vidal was not the best Colo Colo player of, of all time. That he was a dead man, like a nobody. And Chilean <laughs> fans were like, "Dude, we had to Google you. You know what I'm saying? Like Vidal has been to Bayern and everywhere, but yeah, Barcelona. Aussie. Yeah, but also one of the problems with the team and in our in our own town is the marketing." I don't know how it works in LA Galaxy, but the marketing people that works for Austin FC, they're not doing a good job. There's a lot of fans out there. It's almost like they're not even doing it. Nothing. They don't need. To be honest, the marketing is for fans, like the people that do this. We're Austin TV does a lot. Austin TV a lot, but the team they never do nothing for the marketing to reach those fans in your own town. That's true. The, the thing you about say it, yeah. you you don't even see nothing about Austin FC. We were driving around the city, bro. Yeah. The thing about it is, is like the the such the support that came out of the first season, second season, and the the stadium. You know, every game bragging about sold out record extends it's still, for it's another still game. It's still active. It's just like they don't have the pressure to like. I tell you something right now, bro. If the stadium was half full. Maybe a little less every game. You would, I bet you, pre-court whoever would hire a crazy okay. badass marketing team, and they would be pushing it, and they would be demanding answers. Why can't we bring in fans? But since the stadium is quote unquote packed every game, and merch is through the through the roof on sales, I it's mean, like look what you know, I'm wearing. You're Mr. Merch himself. Hey, true, but, true. <laughs> not even the billboard and the freeways, nothing. Yeah. Now yeah. I want to say this in defense of our marketing team because they have pushed this club to some good heights. However, in Spanish, it's not there. The, not in there English, top tier. Insane. I mean, remember when we had Pie Swag? She doesn't work for us anymore. She oh, went yeah. to the U.S. Men's uh, 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 National Team. The people that do all the videos yeah. for the U.S. Men's National Team, they used to do them for Austin. 
and our media team would get awards. Like, they would get recognized for other people. Our fans loved them or whatnot. And then they left for the U.S. Men's National Team, and you saw a drop. You know, and I don't want to disrespect the people that do the work right now. They do a fantastic job. But you saw um, the, the change. You definitely lived it and experienced it. But I want to talk about the Galaxy, bro, because, you know, this is a team that is the most – it's probably the most important team in MLS. But, uh, LAFC fans, LAFC fans – don't murder me. Elaborate murder on that, me. brother. What do you mean? I'm gonna I'm gonna elaborate. If you were to go to Old Trafford and you'd ask them, hey, which two teams are these? Folks will probably recognize the Galaxy because of the Beckham move, because of uh Keane, because of Steven Gerrard. And the LAFC, they've been very relevant since 2018, 2019. But the Galaxy goes all the way back. I mean, they have the most trophies in this league. So are this, they like the United of the MLS in a way? It's, so I've always felt like uh, since 2018, but I felt like we are the United and LAFC is the city. Um, that's what it's been like for that's us. That's a crazy that's comparison. A, that's, um, that's pretty neat. You know, that's, like that's how I felt about <laughs> it. Um, you know, LAFC fans w- would get mad at that just because city fans are seen as plastic. I got nothing to comment on that. Um, but That's a comment um, itself. With, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's that way where, you know, United is still, you know, a top – three biggest club in the world brand wise even if they're not even top three in the league um what's great about this year is the galaxy are top one in the western conference and it's been a great uh you know rebound season and one thing i would say for austin fans and i don't want to be like oh don't show up to matches boycott or whatever um it's you know the galaxy fans did have a boycott to to get our president kicked out chris klein and it worked, and we got him out, and we've seen just a totally different club ever since. And it's also just a, a renewed hope that you feel when when you get something done like that. Um, yeah, I mean, so, same goes for the Columbus crew when mm-hmm. when when Prico was trying to move him. I mean, he was you could tell the fans they weren't showing up for the game; Brother. they didn't really care. And then it took this 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 whole situation and now look at them i mean they've been flying stadiums packed new stadium and everything so i don't know if you know eli but there's news anchors on uh columbus that banter pre-court they say hey mr pre-court this is columbus trophy case since you left what's austin's look like and it's like the local news channels bantering anthony pre-court that's soccer culture to me it's you great. I mean, I, I love that stuff, and it's great that we're seeing that here, especially with the local news yeah. stations and stuff like that. I'm not saying you guys need to go and boycott, but I will say, you know, if you guys have really wanted Josh Wolf out and it, it, it happens, I know that you guys are going to, like, have renewed hope again, and you guys are going to go crazy. Another round, mate. But, brother, talk to me Talk to me about the Galaxy this season, bro, because Diego Fagundes is a guy that we were very upset to see go from Austin FC. There was people that cried literally, you know, rivers of tears when Diego left. I made a sad folks, edit, man. Folks, folks, <laughs> hey, folks. Cheers, cheers, cheers before cheers, we go cheers, into that. Cheers. This is for Diego Fagundes. Cheers to Diego Fagundes and his, and, his, and his beautiful family. Yeah. Shout out to my G, Gary Fagundes. My G, much love to you, bro. I saw you, saw you the other day at the Palmer Event Center selling some shoes. Uh, but talk to me about the Galaxy, bro. I mean, this is a team that got Diego Fagundes, a historic player. We were talking about him, how he's been in this league for so long, and he's still very young. He was an icon in Austin. He still is an icon. He can come to Austin, Texas, and he will be received as a king no matter how much time passes. But this season, the Galaxy, like you said, is a bit of a renaissance, maybe a bit of a rebirth. You got Ricky Puig, Jovalich, Fagundes. Everybody is firing on all cylinders. What's it feel like being a Galaxy fan this year? It's been an incredible season for us, and it's crazy how we were already so fun in the attack, and we were killing it, and then, oh, let's just add Marco Royce, you know? I forgot about like, Marco Royce. <laughs> it, it, it just, it's been an amazing feel. It, back when I was younger, and I would go to Galaxy matches, even before I started making content, you would walk into Dignity Health Sports Park, or it was called StubHub Center, and then before that was Home Depot Center, but you would walk in there knowing that you'd get the three points. And we finally have that feeling back after 10 years because that's when the Galaxy were the giant of MLS. Mm -hmm. And this year it has been that. We have not lost at Dignity Health Sports Park all season. And it's just a magical feeling. Uh, You know, the fan base has been amazing through the ups and downs. But this year, you know, like the the Angel City Brigade, the the V-Block supporter section – 
has been full every single match, even on Wednesday matches, which were pretty bad last year, which like I understand because yeah. the match is at seven and people are off work at five. Like I get it. Um, but you know, it, I do feel like, a it, it just feels different. And we have, or we have our swagger back in the league and you're, you're I got up my swagger right back. <laughs> no, it's yeah. true. Like we, yeah. we have it back. We lost it for yeah. base almost 10 years. You know, it's, it's been, true. this year, it's been 10 years since our last MLS and look cup. What, it, what did it, what did it take? It took patience. It took, but also and the protest the to protest, get Chris Klein out. It, it, it took action. It took action, action, bro. Because we took, we got Chris Klein out, and then we took LAFC's assistant GM, Will Koontz, Will Koontz who's Koontz. my king. Um, and I have a similar situation with Will Koontz that I have with Breck Shea, and I, 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 we yes, were talking we about that. Yes, we got to talk about Breck Shea. Um, but I'll get to Will Koontz then. But you know, and that's how we got Fagundes because we were under sanctions because of Chris mm. Klein, where we couldn't acquire anyone outside of MLS. Will Koontz, his first couple months, he's like, I'm going to get the best assets we can f- from within MLS as possible. And he get brings in Diego Fagundes. That was our best asset While, at while the time. we're sanctioned to yeah. be able to bring in Fagundes. And we brought in Edwin Cerillo during that time, who's been a yes. massive name for us. We got free agent Maya Yoshida, who was literally just chilling in L.A., waiting for like one of the L.A. clubs to pick him up. Wow. He's been a starter for us. That's all Will Koontz is doing. And then he goes in this offseason – and we had two open DP spots because we got rid of – we trimmed the fat um, literally with Douglas Costa. And then Chicha, we love Chicharito. Um, but, you know, it was his time to not be a DP anymore. He's in my Chivas now, and we don't like him anymore. Yeah, well, we love Chicha. We loved <laughs> that's him. That's your goat. We He's not our goat. Omar Bravo is our goat. That's, Omar, that's Omar Bravo bro. is our goat. <laughs> You're going to put Omar Bravo over Chicharito. Omar Bravo is our goat. Bro. You heard it here, bro. Comment. Omar, Sama, whoever, Chivas fans, Omar Vanilla Bravo, Mexican, do you agree with this? Omar Bravo never came back to just charge money. Omar Bravo okay, never came I'm back to charge money. I'm talking about goat player. Oh, don't tell me Chicharito is the goat because he went to play for Manchester. That's it. I'm just looking at their careers. Look Omar at Omar Bravo's Bravo, career. Bro. Compare careers. About, okay, careers. No, I'm talking about club, what they did for Chivas. Omar Bravo, bro. Top He's scorer. your goat. He's your goat. Omar Bravo's the top scorer, dog. Okay, okay. I, okay hey, you know Zama, what? Vanilla Mexican. Zama, all this, Vanilla. All and you know what? I even, need Chivas fans to come in. and, and Nino, 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 Nino. Who, wait, do, you, who do you rank higher? Omar Bravo or Chivas? Good question. For, oh, sorry. Omar Bravo or Chicharo. Oh, yeah. For <laughs> Chivas. I don't I don't want I'm not. I'm not talking about what they did for Mexico. What they did this, this Chivas, was the question, though. Who's your goat? Chivas goat. For Chivas goat. Okay. Omar Bravo. Okay, there you go. Right. Chicharito right. left really young, bro. Chicharito Two, left at like bro, 19 Chicharito years old. leaving from Chivas straight to United was wild at the he time. Did, he did a lot for the country. But for Chivas, all he did was just leave a, leave a bag. Omar Bravo, bro, he week in and week out did everything for the bag. Yeah. Chicharito did as well, but yeah. Chicharito left so young. Okay. You know I, what I'm I saying? Get what you're he left from, so bro. young. I get what you're coming Omar from. Omar is the top scorer still to yeah. this day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know it what is you're saying. A, it's you. definitely it's a, a good debate. It's, 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 it's a, a good debate. It's a good debate. It's a good debate. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to, to yeah. no. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I I don't know this situation specifically, but it sounds like you know someone saying Landon Donovan is the the greatest MLS player of all time, and not like Messi or Zlatan. You know, that's fair? what it sounds yeah. like. Fair. Yeah. Um, which I would I guess, agree I guess, that Landon yeah. Donovan is the MLS Who, goat. Let me ask you this: Who is the LA Galaxy goat in your opinion? So so the thing is, is technically it is Donovan. However, for me, it will always be Robbie Keane. Like Ooh. Robbie Keane for Ooh. me will always be the Galaxy goat. Um, he's he'll always be my favorite player to, that I've watched on the Galaxy. Um, he was very formative for me to in my formative years of wanting to make MLS content. He was that dude for me, uh, and just the way he came in and he he got us you know two two MLS cups was amazing. Or no, it was three. He got us three Damn. MLS cups. It was great. Technically, David Beckham was the greatest in terms of you know blowing up MLS. Yeah. Um, but as a player on the pitch, for me, it was it was Robbie Keane. Damn. Robbie Keane scored 104 goals and 165 appearances for the LA Galaxy Damn, across all competitions during his time with the club from 2011 to 2016. Keane was instrumental in helping the team win three MLS Cups, uh, 2011, 2012, 2014. And my Damn. favorite uh, MLS season, and the reason why I make content today is because of the 2014 season where he won MVP. Is there a documentary or a long YouTube video on that season? I don't be. think there is yet, but for no? me, that was like peak MLS because all my favorite, I mean, maybe that's, maybe it's because it's sentimental for me, mm-hmm. but all my favorite players come from that season. Talk to me about Josh Zardes, mate, real quick. This is a guy that's a legend in LA. He's now in Austin, bro, but what does he mean to the Galaxy fans still? You know, for uh, for him being a homegrown player for us, he wasn't our first homegrown, but he was one of the early real success stories of a homegrown in MLS coming in and like making a long career for a while. We thought, oh, he'd go to Europe one day. 
Um, but the fact that he mm. was he he came up, you know, he's a, just a kid from Hawthorne, as as people love to say. Um, and he he came up for us, and he was also really good very early on, and he was instrumental for that 2014 MLS Cup run as well. Um, and it it was very sad when when we had to let him go, but it it was more of a benefit for his career at the time to to move on from him. Um, but he's always just been a fan favorite for the Galaxy. He's my mom's personal favorite player of all time. <laughs> okay. So you know, if I could meet Lord Jacinio tomorrow, that's what I call nah. him. I would love to. I would love to. You know, take a picture. With I, him I'd love it if you got to meet him, bro. Yeah. Because we were also talking about his son. You know, his his oldest boy right now. He just turned thirteen, and I was telling you. So I keep up. I keep up a lot with the academy. Every year, every every rank, I follow most of the bo- most of the boys that follow us back or they find us. I've always followed them back. I see that they play for the you know the 15s or the 14s or the 13s. Instant follow back because I want to be part of their journey, right? And we were talking about Mini G, Lil Zardis, right? You were saying how you remember when he was born. Well, he just turned 13, and so he's now officially in the ranks of MLS Next and all that, like all that youth program. So he's he's with the Austin FC U13s, and he's gonna be climbing up and up and up and it's crazy that you you told that to me the other day. You were like, I, I remember when he was born. And literally the other day, I was like, yo, he's 13. So time just flies so f- – just goes by so fast, man. It's funny because I feel old even though I'm, you know, the youngest person. Is, I, just feel like, <laughs> I feel like such a – like a, a veteran now. I, yeah. I, it's funny. I did a FIFA stream, my first uh, EAFC stream, and everyone thought I was playing like an unk, and they were calling me unk in the chat. Yeah. So I feel, I, I feel like I've hit unk status, which, I'm, you know, I'm, I'll embrace that. I'm, yeah. I'm unk status. I mean, I'm a dad. No, you're not unk. I'm you unk. A I'm a dad. Yeah, you're yeah. an unk. I'm an unk, bro. I haven't reached New Balance dad phase yet, but once I have a kid, oh, I'll be like the, New with Balance. The, with the Shorts. <laughs> Everyone be rocking the New Balances, yeah. the, just the comfort bro, shoes. People overlook your shoe game, bro. People <laughs> overlook your shoe game. Yeah, every not today, but you know, in general. No, today, today's chill vibes, yeah. touristy vibes. I mean, I got slides on today. It's chill vibes for it's sure. Chill vibes, it's chill vibes. <laughs> but Ozzy, you wanted to say something? Yes, though. probably you guys were so junk to recognize the one and only the goal to play for LA Galaxy. The one, the guy that put the LA Galaxy the map. Can I Jorge guess? Jorge Campos. Oh, Campos. Campos. The only goalkeeper can use the number nine as a goalkeeper. Well, Man, I mean, that that's so crazy. Cool. Bro, we know about him. Do you remember? We, yeah. I, you I wasn't alive for that, but yeah. we, I, I, I mean, that. I know of him. I, yeah. I've watched every Good Galaxy call. history uh-huh. thing possible. Um, so he was one of the guys that really put us on the map earlier. We also had uh, Mauricio Cienfuegos. Cienfuegos. That's who, who I thought you were going to say. Cienfuegos. Who was also very massive. And he's around. He's at every single match he, at, really? at Dignity Health Sports Park. Cienfuegos, is, he's is like he a part big, of the club or he's just – No, but he's just kind of a, an ambassador for the club. You okay. know, they of course, they, they give – he deserves the red carpet treatment. But, he, you know, yeah. every match he wants to go to, I'm sure he, he gets the hookups for tickets and everything. But, you know, we're, we're really good at, at um, looking at our, our past guys – uh, the real builders of the league and honoring them as much as possible, which has been really cool. I got a, I got one more. I got a question. Just uh, how, just for the Austin to see fans that are, whoa, what's going on here? Hey, I yo, clicked hey, on the wrong. Hey, hey. Whoa, whoa. I clicked hey, on the man, wrong. You need, you need to change your algorithm, brother. <laughs> yeah, well, don't put me out there like that. It was I'm not sorry. algorithm. I'm sorry. It was my, a search. My question, Eli, it was certainly was, the explore page. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ha- how? Um, how? Ha- has uh, Diego Fagundes impacted the team? What's what do you rate him as far as this season? You know, because from Austin FC fans, like H said, he's beloved here, and I just wanted to see from being a LA Galaxy fan, how what's his performance according to you? Like, how have you seen him? He's been so good at filling in wherever he needs to. We need him to play, and that's the thing with the Galaxy over the last few years, especially on the attack. We have not had great depth, and the fact that you know he's not our starter, um, which I, I feel like. I feel bad for you guys because I know you guys want him to be like the starter and everything. It's just amazing that we have a guy who could come off the bench at his level. And, you know, if one of our wingers, uh, Peck or Painsel, are hurt, Fagundes will come in and we'll know that it's not like, you know, we're not getting like, worse oh, as a team, yeah, you know? Okay, okay. Um, and we haven't had that, like, at all. Um, and Fagundes is such a legend of the league. He's been in the league yeah. so long and he's not even yeah. old. Um, you know, we all Galaxy fans love Fagundes. I've never seen a negative comment about him. Mm-hmm. I know maybe we don't love him as much as you guys loved him because I don't think anyone can. Um, but shout out to, <laughs> y- to you guys for that. Um, but, you know, when I found out we were getting Fagundes, I'm like, this is amazing. He was less than a year off from being so crucial for your 2022 yeah. season. Yeah. And then we, 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 were, we were able to bring him in. I'm like, this is the new leaf. And maybe he was that first signing that we made uh, post-Klein where I'm like, hey, we're actually like – being smart right again, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And Fagundes, youngest player in MLS history to score. Fagundes became the youngest player in MLS in history to score a goal uh, at the time. Doing so at 16 years old in 2011. Uh, he was also MLS career 50-50 club. We were talking about that the other day. He's part of the exclusive group of players who have achieved both 50 goals and 50 assists in MLS. You know, what a played, milestone. played in New England, played in Austin. And this guy, you know, he, he's a very interesting guy because he, he his story is like he was talking to his dad. I've been trying to get that freaking thing, too. Yeah, it's just been one bog little like, fruit fly. Yeah, yeah. He, so Fagundes was talking to his dad three days before he gets the offer from Austin. And he's, he says that he told his father, he's like, hey, I want a new start. Austin sounds like cool. But they were joking about it. And then three days later, he gets a call from Austin FC to come to the club. That's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. But Diego is a very important person for us, mate, just like you said. And we want the absolute best for him. So hopefully... I mean, I don't want to piss any LAFC fans off. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot of homies out there. But I wouldn't be mad if I see Diego Fogundes get a chip with the Galaxy this season, bro. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I just want to clear the air about, you know, any negative comments I might say about LAFC. Um, in general, it's because of how the fans treat me that's made like me you. this way. Wait, wait. So they, I'm, I'm not familiar target. with this. Oh, I'm very much familiar with this. It's okay. It's, right it's, it is what it is. Every team needs to have one. It's just funny how they claim to be a big club, yeah. yet I'm their target. You know, yeah. I'm not like a cel- major celebrity and, or anything. You know, they should, if they want to be, have a big club mentality, they should target someone bigger than me. But, you know, that's okay. I get it. They don't like me. That's fine. Um, but the reasons why I may say negative things isn't yeah. because of the rivalry. It's actually because of how I get treated by them on a daily basis. So, They've created the salt. I didn't hate LAFC like that when we originally, when the the rivalry started. I was very neutral for many years. Yeah. Uh, I was always a Galaxy fan, but I would appear as neutral online. But um, also, it's just it's getting harder to be that way. Also, but, you've been you've been cooking. You've been spreading the word of the league. You've been making you've been content longer than, longer than been they've been al- they've yes. been alive. So, you know, when they came up, it's you were already on another uh, level. Ah, so. pause. Technic- no, fact check. I think we're wrong in that. Wait, what do you mean? Because they were Chivas USA. Ah, uh, what are you taking they were, shots? No, no, no. It's not a shot. They were Chivas USA. No, can, no. Can, can, can you facts. deny the fact? No, I'm not denying the fact. Deny the I fact. Did, I didn't deny it, though. They were Chivas USA. I just said you're taking shots. That's no, all I said. No, no, I didn't no, say I'm that's not, not true. I'm trying to help LAFC fans you out. Know they're, you know they're going to be like, that's a shot. You know no, they are. No, no. That's my boy. Shout out to my G. Juan. I didn't say it. You did. No, no. Not you. No, I, no. Uh, no, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. <laughs> which 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 one are we talking about? Uh, the one that makes all the memes. Yeah, for yeah. My my best Vargas. friend. My best friend. Bob Vargas. Yeah, he got no guy leads the charge against me more than that guy. So oh, so so me and, me and yeah. him me and him. So he does memes for us sometimes. So yeah. I, I like text him every now and then. And then when he saw that you were here with me and Austin, he was like, "Come on, fool. Why are you with them?" If man? he didn't if he didn't hate me, I think he and I would be best friends. Like I think he's very funny. I, it's just unfortunate how much. He goes out of his way to, to, you know, to try to ruin things for me. It was funny. I got a real quick. I, you know, uh, one of the biggest opportunities of my career came this year and I I was in a Volkswagen commercial for the Copa America. Right. And I posted about it being like, hey, I'm in this commercial. Yet his tweet posting about it, hating on it. Got way more engagement than my post celebrating. Yeah. I was like, "Damn, it, it, it's thing. like that," you know. That's the thing, and I'm sure I'm 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 almost on, certain. Juan. There's I'm almost certain that if they were to sit down and like we are having a couple of brewskis chatting about the game and just putting all this out, they would be like, "Man, this guy's pretty cool, man." It's just all the the stuff that surrounds the. I don't know, bro. That's the only MLS rivalry that exists. The that's LA the, that's LA that's the thing. That's what I wanted to do. Is like what I wanted to get to is like the the, the, <laughs> the rivalry between the two leagues. It's it's almost like. Oh, man, it's that's, real, that, bro. That's it's real. real. Yeah. It's it's bigger than hell is real. It's bigger than Austin, Dallas, Houston combined. Yeah. The Galaxy versus LAFC is the biggest rivalry in MLS, and it's real. It's genuine. And it's not manufactured. It exists. Yeah, and people love people who are fans of other rivalries, specifically the Cascadia. The Cascadia. Cup, yeah. They love to to crap on El Tráfico, saying, "Oh, it's manufactured. The league pushes it too hard." The fans push it. It's yeah. it's it really is the fans, and it sucks because uh, some of my closest friends in the soccer community were for a while LAFC fans as well, and they knew I was a Galaxy fan, and they were cool with that. Um, you know, I I do think, and you guys mentioned, you know, I do appear a certain way online, and I think that rubs people the wrong way in a certain way, even though I'm not even that that harsh. I just sometimes I have like a snarky tone in my voice in some of my videos, and. I the amount of times people have said, "Oh my God, you're way different than I thought you were, or you would be when I've met when okay. I met you." Like you're you're way different. Um, that 
I'd be a millionaire if I had a nickel every time someone said that to me. <laughs> that's interesting. Well, that's, that's the thing. You know, being in the content game, it's a lot of, we have to deal with a lot of... Uh, you put uh, yourself out there. You put yourself out there. You have a strong opinions about stuff. And you're a, a fan of these teams. And it's always going to be a par, you know, maybe to different extents. Like maybe what you've been going through with the rivalry. You know, we also have a, a fair share of that as well ourselves here. And it's just, it's just part of the game. And, you know... Now, we're, we're creeping up on an hour of program, just over an hour, and I, I do want to mention just maybe two more topics before we get out of here. I wish we could go on forever, right? But uh, just two more things maybe that I wanted to mention, the Breck Shea stuff. Oh, I know we, we wanted to, to talk about that. What's been your journey with him, Breck Shea? I know you, you met him finally, and he low-key kind of gave you some love. Yeah, no, so he did give me love. So Breck Shea, for those who don't know, he's a former USMNT player. He was an MLS player. He, he went to Stoke, and he was able to do it on a rainy day in Stoke. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Breck Shea, he, he's been around. He was never, like, one of the greatest players ever, but he was never one of the worst. But he always had aura, and I think that was a big thing. And he always just – he had a certain vibe when you looked at him. And uh, in my community, and other people like to take credit for the Breck Shea thing, I started it. Um, he became my goat, you know, and I would push him as the goat. Yeah, you see his hair and everything, um, but he, he, he I'm just like, this is the goat. I'm going to just keep making videos about him being the goat. I even made a song, April Fool's. There's a rap song, and I made a music video for it <laughs> uh, with, with Breck Shea as the goat, and that's, that's where it really blew up for me. Anyway, so I went to TST this year, and I saw he was on a roster, and, like, I was, like, my one mission – is to meet Breck Shea and to share a body armor with him because I was there with body armor. Anyways, actually, very first match I went to, he happened to play, and I waited for him at the end. And he went up to me, and he was like – or I went up to him first. Um, and he was super chill, and he he actually said that he sees everything that I post. He's just not the type to, like, follow or like and engage in that stuff. So I was like, damn, this guy knows me. That's kind of awkward. And that's where, <laughs> that's where things – you know, so when I say my relationship with Breck Shea has now changed now that I know him, and I mm -hmm. also saw him again in Miami. We played in a tournament, uh, the Body Armor Creators Cup. And for me – oh, Shion's calling me. Shion, oh, hey, great TV. Shion, yeah. Shion, Shion. Um, shout out to Shion. But, um, so, uh, but FaceTime him. <laughs> yeah, so what happens is, is when you meet someone – and that you, 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 you talk a lot about, you speak very highly of them a lot. And yeah. I mentioned this with Will Koontz because for some reason when I met Will Koontz, he said he knew who I was. That was awesome. Really? Yeah, which is very weird. Um, oh. He introduced himself to – it was it was at a Galaxy tailgate. I was actually piss drunk. Not the time I want to meet, <laughs> meet Will Koontz. But he came up to me and he was like, oh, hey, Eli, it's nice to meet you, bro. Um, are you FaceTiming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to FaceTime him. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What's up, hey, dude? Hey, FaceTime with my G. Sorry, What's I missed up, your call. <laughs> We're here in Stu. We're here in Stu. We're here in Stu. We're going to call you back. Up, brother? We're going to call, back. call you back, okay? No, 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 no. Hey, you know what? Actually, say uh, something to the pod real quick. Hello, everybody. Um, this is your friendly neighborhood Persian guy here. and uh, <laughs> Make sure to listen to Top Flight Podcast. Sheesh. Soundbite. Medi Taremi's the goat. <laughs> <laughs> Team Melly. Right, well, <laughs> okay cool so right. stuff, so uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah call you back later we'll call you back we'll call you thank back thank you bro um yeah by the way shout out to sean he's been helping me i started live stream which i'm hoping to be that, a big thing i'm hoping yeah. that like can become a stream of income for me which i need right now but um you know uh, he's gonna be great help but anyways back to the Rex shay will coons vote that vibe when you meet someone that you you idolize not necessarily idolize but like you talk positively about you, you have this thing where you're like, wow, it's so cool. I finally met them. But then you're like, oh, snap. This guy knows how much I meet right him. That's awkward. <laughs> that is really awkward. Um, so basically now I'm like, I want to back off that a little okay. bit. Yeah. Because it, if, if you appear too much of a fan of someone, yeah. then it's like there's that weird dynamic in the relationship. Mm. Um, so that's why I've backed off Breck Shea and I've backed off um, Will Koontz a little bit. I mean, Will Koontz, I'm always going to just like kind of meet right because he's been amazing for my club. He's a um, but, you know, it's just a, that it's that awkward thing where you're like, damn, this guy knows I meet right him. That's like a weird <laughs> – That's a, it's just very weird. Um, sure. So that that's my feelings about it. But it's so cool that I finally met him after, you know, over four years of hyping him up. Um, that's when – I think 2020 is around where it really started. I mean, but. no disrespect to Breg Shea, but he, he kind of owes you – 
oh. a third of his career almost. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you've made him relevant. You, I mean, I wouldn't know Brick Show without you, brother. Yeah, I mean, he he was relevant in his own right, and he was a great it's player. True. But at near the end of his career, he definitely wasn't really a a name, and I wanted to keep his legacy. I like that. I like that. I like that, bro. Well, I mean, B, is there any other questions you have for Mr. Eli Lesser, brother? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, outside of MLS, outside of, you know, creating content, it's just like, you know, what are your, you know, you just started your new live streaming, you know, you're going to be live streaming and, and good luck with that and, 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 and everything's like, what's your, what's a goal that you have? I mean, you've been making it for a while, like, where do you want to see yourself in a couple of years, like, with making content? Yeah, my biggest dream has been more of a traditional media role, which maybe it shouldn't be anymore with just the way that, yeah. you know, the game is changing. Uh, but my dream has always been to have, like, uh, not necessarily for kids, um, but for a younger audience, a TV show basically introducing kids to MLS or, like, yeah. just about MLS. I always envisioned it to be – do you guys ever watch the show iCarly? Yeah. I, oh, I hell yeah. Like Drake the, and Josh, yeah, iCarly. Yeah, so with on, iCarly. Bro. I mean, you know, I skimped. I mean, it was on. Yeah. Sure. No, no, no. You're, 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 you're <laughs> talking to an iCarly and Drake okay. and Josh yeah. expert, brother. So my, Drake my, and Josh, yes. My dream, if you know the web show that they did on iCarly, yeah, 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 yeah. it'd be like that, like, hookiness, but yeah. about, like, soccer, MLS. Random American soccer. Yeah. Like, so, exactly. That's yeah. that's my dream has always been Don't to, like, have a show <laughs> like that that's, like, on a major platform. Um, okay. You know, my, my dream for all of this is to to be the gateway. I say it like a gateway band for for people into Major League Soccer fandom. And, you know, I, I'm a punk guy. So I look at, like, the Blink-182 Green Day for, for everyone's, like, Dead Kennedys, Black Flag, where it's like I'm the first guy they go through, and then they want to dive when they – I'm like – you know, that's the not, intro. Yeah, like the, the intro. Yeah, yeah. And then when the they want to dive drug. deeper, yeah. they go to guys like you guys. Like, <laughs> I'm let's talking say, about kids, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. But, but like, like, yeah, yeah. Just good. like when someone, <laughs> you know, so let's say a kid in Austin's never watched MLS before. Yeah. They want they they find my page. They're like, oh, MLS is kind of cool. Then they they watch my videos and they're like, oh, Austin has a club. So then they want to go to you guys to learn more about yeah, Austin. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be able to cover all 29 clubs the way that in each individual creator of a club, you know, talks about the club. But my, my goal is to be the, the opening of the, you know, the I, the gateway, literally yeah, the gateway that, for people to find you guys. That's that's dope, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like an intro I mean, because you I'm trying my to my gateway to the MLS. Be, be, I, honestly, that's straight up, man. That's honor, though that I and I get a lot. Yeah. I don't want to like sound be, like I'm cool or anything, but like I get a lot of DMs saying stuff yeah. like that. And it's that's the, that's the whole point of yeah. why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm Fo- to... follow, follow up question because to, to that, to that, straight up, man, because coming from us, when Austin FC was announced, we're like, man, I want to get more into the league. I want to want to see what the league. Guess what pops up? Guess what was the main thing? This was, weekend, was, MLS. Was, at the was, time, this weekend, yeah. MLS. Yeah. So, so um, I guess when you were starting out, is there anyone out there that like you were like when you wanted to make content that you saw that they were they were you were like, a young what kid was what was your yeah. your so, gateway? I guess is what I'm trying to say. So the way I for the people who have been there since the start, the way I used to do my posts, and if you want to pull it up on Instagram, uh, was an Instagram account called All Sports News. And the way that they posted their stuff, I was like, I want to make an All Sports News account, but but for MLS. Yeah, that account. So with the white borders, I used to make posts like these. Oh, okay. And I, I didn't make videos actually till the pandemic. And we, we mentioned yesterday how we had certain parts of our lives where, you know, we, we needed to, and you know, things were getting in the way, let's say. Um, and for me, COVID was a huge wake up call in my career. And that's when I started to make videos. Um, but before I just made graphic posts, just like writing news paragraphs about the biggest things happening in MLS. Um, so that was that because there was no one posting MLS um, yeah. at the time, aside from the MLS account, that's why I wanted mm. to do MLS. Cause I'm actually just as big of a fan of the NBA as I am an MLS fan, but there's so many people making content of yeah. NBA. What am yeah. I going to provide? You know, yeah. and I, I noticed that at Feel a young that. age, which was, I guess, cool of me. Um, that's, but that's why the why sport I, is so new. It's like yeah. there's untapped uh, fans that that love the sport, but they're not into MLS. And you know, that's when me and H, when we started with us on TV, is like, dude, like look around, like uh, we want to we want to grow this. We are part of the growth of the sport. And then you look now, now there's so many content creators, and every every team has their you know which versions, is so important. It's which so is, important is, um, that it's, you guys exist. Yeah. It's important yeah. guys like Top and Ninety exist. Yeah, that shout out, so, shout out, Top Man. It's so important. Cheyenne, Ray Cheyenne, Ray, yeah, Ray, Ray, everybody, it's, it's it's amazing. It's so important that each club has their creators like that. It's unfortunate that you know, uh, 
MLS isn't big enough to where the the creators of each club can really become like massive yet, um, like they like they are with the big clubs in Europe. You could be, you you could yeah. have a bigger. I see people with much larger followings than me that just talk about one club just because of how big that club yeah, is. You know, yeah. I mean, look um, at Arsenal fan TV. I exactly. mean, because yeah. Arsenal, you have fans in not only in England, yeah, but all over the Indonesia, world, Indonesia, yeah. Malaysia, Africa, Everywhere. Spain, the United States. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's just so important, though, that, that people like you guys exist because you guys are the real drivers in your city that really cultivate and have the pulse on the fans. And I get, you know, in my position, I get to look at guys like you to, to, to know what's happening to help me yep. with my stuff because I really can't dive in to all 29 teams all the time. Exactly. I, I can't be an expert of all 29 clubs. You know, when I started, there were 19 clubs in the league. It's just crazy how it's already, <laughs> it's life we're going to have okay. 30 next year. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I, it, it is getting harder for yeah. me to like keep up my knowledge. Sure. Um, but now I'm in a position where I'm trying to take that pressure off myself a little bit to mm. be the expert and to be more of a learner while I'm making my content. Mm. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I really appreciate that honesty, bro, because I'm not going to say any names, but there are commentators where they will get a stat wrong about a team or whatnot, and they will double down on it and pretend to be experts in the league. But let's be real. It's very hard to keep up with this league because it's growing so fast. Yeah, and that's an amazing thing as well, that it is growing so fast. That's uh, the beauty of you know being an American soccer fan and supporting MLS right now it is being a part of that growth where you ne you can't necessarily be like that with clubs that have been around for hundreds of years that's mm -hmm. why it's so awesome you know for you guys to have you know come up with the club you know yeah. you guys are going to be you know I, you guys might be as big of club legends as diego fagundas is when it's all said and done just because <laughs> you guys have been a part of <laughs> like crazy. the the creation of it i feel that though i feel that because I've, I've had little kids come up to me and they're like the can time. you sign my shirt yeah and i'm like bro i got a I gotta put in forty on Monday, dog. I'm not. I'm not a celebrity, bro. Bro, I got exposed so bad the first time I ever signed someone's anything. I was so shook that someone asked me to sign it that I hand printed it in my like elementary school print writing. It looked so bad, and it was shown in the video that I posted. And everyone's like, "What the hell is this signature?" Um, so now I make my signature so illegible that you can't tell it even says Eli. Um, but. Nah, man. Honestly, what you said there, bro, I really, uh, I really appreciate the words, and also, you know, B B knows how uh, what the what the struggle yeah. is. You know, Ozzy's coming in. You know, we we we're it's a grind, bro. Massive help from him. We have guys. We've had guys that aren't with us anymore that were, you know helped us, work with us, but other things have popped up in their life, and they've seen more. They've put more emphasis in that part, and I don't blame them. You know what I'm saying? Because we're trying to grow. This is like a startup, and. And, you know, the fact that you, you know, you're, you're noticing that from us, it, it really means a lot to me. Like myself, at the beginning of the pod, I said you were a very influential figure for me when I started the content. You and AJ from Atlanta Fan United TV, two big, no, the only reasons why I, I started this. I mean, you, you guys are the reason why, you know, fan bases can exist and you're an outlet for them. I, I, I can't stress just how, how important you guys are to, to your individual clubs. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about everyone who does it. And, you know, we're the ones cre really doing the hard work um, for clubs, marketing teams right. in general, you know, yeah. and the league in general. And that's, you know, a, a big thing that I've had with, you know, my psyche about my, you know, maybe working for MLS. It's, you know, they MLS likes me, but because I do everything they do for free, mm. you know, that's kind of um, what that's, eh. I mean, hey, we know, it's, we, it's, know it's, we know, and that th that is kind of hey. that's why I rebranded. Actually, uh, a big reason why I rebranded yeah. from this week in MLS is because I need to be able to explore any ways that I can to to make this a career for myself. For you sure. know, um, as big as it, or as well as I might seem to be doing, and I don't want to be like, oh, poor me, because. I, I very much am very happy with where I'm at, You've but at the same it. time, I don't have enough money to move out of my parents' house yet, you know? Like, right. I'm not making an, – and this is my only thing. You know, you guys have your, your day jobs, and then you come do this. Yeah. For me, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make this, like, my full-time thing. I, I'm not making enough to leave, you know, my parents. And I want to stay in L.A. So, you know, maybe I could live – on my own in a different city, but you know, in LA specifically, it's just that impossible. other city. That other city would be uh, if I were to move, possibly yeah. Austin. You hey. know, I'm possibly hey. Eli. Hey. I have so I have a couple cities that like I really like. If it's like a if I had to move in Austin, it it it's been pretty awesome here. I like it a lot, and I knew that heading in because I've been here before, but a long time ago before Austin FC existed, and I always liked it. Um, and I like the vibes here, and it's a nice city. Um, you know, it, it would be top three for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, guys, we're going to sign off here, boys. We're going to get out of this too. 
Eli, before we get out of here, though, is there any message you would have to any future content creators out there, any kids that are coming up, man, and, and that look up to you? I mean, anything that you would like to say to the folks out there? Yeah, so my big – I'm going to sit up for this one, um, and I'll speak to the camera. My biggest piece of advice for anyone who wants to get into this is find, first of all, what you are most passionate about and find how you could put your take on something. You don't have to be completely original um, because let's be real with how saturated the content market is – Every no one's original in what they're doing. It's about that one to ten percent that you do differently than other people. It's going to matter and find what that is and deliver it at a consistent rate. Damn. B, anything else you'd like to say, mate? Also, be ready to put in the work. Grind, grind, grind. You see people making videos, making content. You want to maybe if you're just reaching for likes and comments and love, try to think about it as the grind. Work, cook, edit, post. And the likes and love will come naturally. Head yeah. down and work. But yes, also, sir. likes and love, but, you know, don't get discouraged by negativity um, because it, it's very hard to – it's going to be impossible to avoid. Um, you know, I, I get it quite often. I've had to leave certain – I've left Twitter just because it's not for me. Um, but, you know, it's uh, – you know, don't get discouraged by it. People are going to hate. People don't have anything better to do with themselves than to hate. Um, but don't let those, them, you know, burn your shine. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, like Pablo Escobar and the gift that I always post on Twitter. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers mate. Top Fly Pablo Eli Lesser. Thank you guys for joining us for this conversation. Shout out to my compa Ozzy for the Tecate lights. I'll, anything you'd like to say, Ozzy, as we get out of here? Está bien? Vámonos. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.